Welcome! E aí, galera, beleza? Bem-vindo à nossa comunidade. Welcome to our community. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's OGC here. Welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're going to be doing Void Sage 94. We're going to be doing this as a cast level 27 human with three heroes or less perfected. So let's jump on in and uh, yeah, let, let's do this. It looks like we're going up against Dwarf. There's a ton of mechs. There is mounted archers. I'm sorry, they're, they're just cavalry. They are not the archer ones. Uh, and there are three dwarf fort things. So for this, uh, what we ended up doing was we swapped our, our power side, we put the power side on the top. With that, we have a tanky bottom side. So for our tanky bottom side, we have our Azura Dragon. We also have a pack of gold swords pulled back, which means that the mechs in uh, hopefully the blasters are going to have to run forwards quite a bit before they start blowing up our swords. We do have a pack of silver swords in, in the uh, bottom middle area. Well, let's see if we can scroll up so that I, I, I can show you what we're doing on this top side. So for, for the top side, we have double packs of uh, gold swords. We have all three uh, archers all getting Warhorn boost with uh, Avalon. With uh, Bazrix kind of in the back, he'll, he'll run forward super fast and he will have Warhorn boost. Now, the reason why we kind of pulled everything down to cells was so we can stick Varian in this top portion. Blasters eat through swords like no tomorrow, so it's really important for sages like this, especially as they get harder to keep your Viren alive so that uh, he can do his resurrections and provide tankiness and protection for your archers. So we're going to jump on in and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to drop a bad splits. We're going to try and deal as much damage to the max as possible. The max are going to be the tankiest and hardest part. So now we're going to actually drop down the, uh, the pet boost on a single pet pack of archers because we'll blow through that top side and then we'll have to start focusing on that middle. Uh, so as uh, it, it, it just worked for this, we're gonna drop the ne next bat splits down on uh, as many mechs as possible in the bottom side. You can see our swords are really struggling to tank, so we do do a Viren re resurrection. Our archers are now uh, progressing forwards. The top side, almost all the troops are down, and we can start working on the fortresses. The mechs and blasters on in the bottom side. The blasters are still alive, and that they're causing major, major issues. Luckily, we have Badrix down there as well. He does have life steal from his prism, so hopefully he can tank. However, he ends up dropping. But with that, we've taken out two of the fortresses. Uh, we have swordsmen moving to the last in the blasters now moving up and they're blasting away at our archers our archers finally take down the mechs so now the archers can focus on the blasters they take them down and now we're onto the fortress so it looks like we'll be able to get this one uh perfected with about uh 27 seconds left uh in, in the actual match very tough uh blasters are just so strong against humans so damage dealt we can see our badgers did tons of damage again we dropped both bad splits on all as many mechs as possible the the mechs tank the archers extremely well um once you make it through the mechs taking out blasters super easy the force just take time so the mechs are probably the the hardest thing to, to make it through in this stage our archers also did fantastic damage uh, next, we are going to take a quick look at damage taint, and of course, swords did good. Uh, dragon is actually there, and healing Bazrix and the dragon did a lot of healing. As far as our, our troops and everything like that, you can see on the outside, uh, because the attack of our swords is higher than their health, we did swap the prisms on the outside and put on all troop attack prisms on the outside. Uh, our swords have uh, 20,000 health at level uh, 9, and they have 14% evasion. So that they're, they're okay, N nothing super special. Uh, next we have our Zer Dragon with Noble Blood, Double Scales, Three Damage Abilities, and Hero Pride. Uh, we have Zen Archers, our Zen Archers now have 20% crit rate and uh, almost 27,000 attack. Uh, they're definitely getting up there. Switching the prisms on the outside of Void for troop attack really helps. We have Badgers. Badgers has, has Adaptive 3, so he gets some, some Life Seal. Um, now he's level 40, so we have Flurry up there. We have um, all, all of his skills brought up higher. Virian's there for uh, the Swords with all of the Resurrect abilities, and we have Warrior Prism on our Avalon. Again, if you really are struggling with, with these Sages, swap your Prisms before going in. That, that way you can get like the Dragonic Defiance uh, on Virian to keep your Dragon alive a little bit longer, or whatever you need to complete the Sage. For this, this is the formation that we use. Please uh, screenshot now. Um, 
Yeah, the biggest thing is to, to try and keep Varian alive so that you don't immediately have to use the uh, Crusader Res Resurrection right before he dies, and you can kind of use it when it's needed rather than just using it before he's dead. Uh, so let's go get the juicy reward, see if we can get anything good, and we, we get a couple things. So with that, um, we do have a Void playlist. Uh, it's going to pop up at the end of this, this video after I say, please like, share, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff, and have a wonderful day. Take care.